Hi, my name is Art Adams, and I'm the Cinema Lens Specialist at Airy in Burbank, California. And today I'd like to show you the very specific differences between our old color science and our new color science reveal. Prior to joining Airy, I was a cinematographer for about 27 years. And I've always been fascinated by the reproduction of color. So whenever a new color science comes along, I always like to dive into it and figure out as much about what I'm seeing and what I'm sensing as possible. Because oftentimes when I look at color, I have an emotional response to it, but I always want to know why I have that response to it, because that way I can reproduce it. So I figured out some ways of breaking down the differences between different kinds of color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference between our old color science and our new color science. And I'm really going to break it down for you so you can see what I see. But first, let's talk a little bit about what Reveal is. Now, Reveal is a combination of a number of different things. For example, we have a new Debayer algorithm, which produces more detail. That doesn't necessarily mean the image is sharper. It just means that I can see more detail in the image. I can perceive more. And it's a significant difference. And I'm, I really like this effect because I don't necessarily like images that are overly sharp, but I do like images where I can appreciate the subtleties of what I'm viewing, especially at high resolution. We've done a complete rewrite of our color science. Now, we had best-in-class color science before, but we were using the same tools that everyone else used. Now we're using a completely new mathematical model that allows us to not only accurately map hues, but accurately map the brightness of those hues in order to better match human perception. We have a new color space, Airy Wide Gamut 4, which surprisingly is smaller than our old color space. But the reason for this is that we are much more accurate in how we map our hues within that color space. So we don't need to overshoot in certain areas in order to make certain colors work. We can now have a color space that's just bigger than Rec 2020 and we can accurately map hues very well within that color space, much more accurately than we could do before. We have a new log curve, log C4. We had to change that a bit because we now have significantly more overexposure headroom. We have a stop and a half more highlight headroom. We also have a stop more of shadow detail. So we had to change things up a little bit there. And also we changed the log curves encoding so previously, we actually had a different log curve for each exposure index. It, they were slightly different. And the reason for this is because we used to focus on eliminating banding in 10-bit workflows when capturing high dynamic range images. And we maybe overcompensated a little bit because we always want to make sure that we're not producing issues later on that are going to get caught in post and uh, maybe result in some uh, unfortunate reshoots. What we've done now is we have one curve for every exposure index, which makes things much more simpler, and it also helps significantly in visual effects post workflows. And we also have new display reference transforms for getting you to the color space that you need to go to. And we really do recommend using these until you get a feel for the new reveal color science and how it responds. It's a little bit different, and once you get the feel of it, you're really going to like it, but it doesn't work the same way as the old color science does. So you just have to be aware that there are some differences to get used to. Now, when I first started looking at the Alexa 35, I asked for some reference images, and these were the images that I got from our R&D department. What they show is that you can process Mini-LF Airy Raw through Reveal and the color will match the Alexa 35. Now, I'm a big believer in trust, but verify. So what I did was I got a color picker out on my computer and I sampled all those different patches and then I built a spreadsheet so I could look at those colors side by side and verify that mini LF footage process the reveal doesn't match. And it does seem to be a very good match. What's interesting is to look at the original color science and see the differences there. And what's really interesting is that if you remove all the color and you just look at their brightness values, there are significant changes in how colors are rendered in terms of brightness. 
And I had some questions about what's going on because it seems like some colors are significantly brighter than I see in the reveal processed footage. And when I asked this question, what I was told was, different colors have different brightness values as far as how we perceive them, how our brain senses their brightness. And we can more accurately map that with our new color science code than we could before. Previously, we could get the hues right, but we couldn't always get the perception of brightness correct. And now with our new model, we can. We have come probably as close to matching human perception as a camera has ever been able to achieve, or a color science has ever been able to achieve. And as you can see, some of these colors are fairly significantly different in brightness. And we're gonna go into the specifics of that in a moment. But first, I just wanted to illustrate that colors do have perceived brightness values. For example, here, I think the blue is probably the darkest, uh, the green is probably the brightest, and the red probably falls somewhere in between. And actually, uh, if we order them the way our brain perceives their brightness, it would be more like this from left to right. Green comprises about 70% of our sense of brightness, red is about 20 to 22%, and blue is only about 8% of our sense of brightness. Now, this is an American color chart. This is a German color chart. As you can tell, we take this very seriously. Now, when we compare this to Reveal, if we look at the color chips at the top right, I see the greatest differences in greens and purples. And if I go back and forth a little bit, you can really see that their luminance value changes. But I can also see more specific hues. I can see a greater variety of greens and a greater variety of, uh, I would say, purples. And this is really significant. I'm going to show you some dramatic examples of how that's changed. In a practical sense, if we look at these peppers at the bottom of the frame, what's interesting is that their shadows seem like they're a little bit more contrasty in the reveal footage. And that's because we can map the brightness values of these colors more accurately now. To me, it almost feels like the original color science has slightly lifted shadows, almost like a flashed uh, film negative. And I feel like the reveal delivers kind of a crisper image that still has plenty of detail in the shadows. So I shot a little project where I tried to torture a mini LF with challenging colors. And then I processed the footage in both ways, in both color sciences. I focused on red, cyans, purples, blues. These are issues that all cameras have, and there's always trade-offs. For example, in our case, our, our reds have traditionally shifted a little bit towards the blue side, and this is a compromise we made to address other things, like we focus very uh, heavily on uh, producing exceptional skin tone. But maybe these reds were just a little bit of a compromise that we had to uh, accept in order to get there. Um, blues, we've had some issues with darker blues map, uh, when mapped into aces, our darker blues can clip. Um, we've fixed this in reveal, I'll show you that in a moment. We also looked at really bright saturated colors from neon tubes and LED lights and a couple of orbiters and sky panels because the new reveal color science handles color and highlights exceptionally well. And color in general from shadows through highlights really tracks well. And this is not something that all cameras do. You can see color shifts when you're ramping through exposure. Say, a color in the shadows will not be the same color when you move, it, uh, move the exposure so it falls into the highlights. It doesn't always track properly. But in Reveal, the colors really do track exceptionally well. What you're going to see in these tests is more accurate color and brightness. You're going to see increased saturation and highlights, and that's important for the future of HDR because HDR excels there. In the past, we looked at film as our reference, and film actually rolls off saturation and highlights over a very broad range. But in HDR, saturated highlights can really shine, and now that we can produce them exceptionally accurately, we focused on putting more color into the highlights. At the top of the curve, we still have the same gentle roll off that we had before, but it happens much farther up so that we can allow colors to breathe. We see less of what the light is doing in terms of color and more of what it's illuminating. And I've got some examples of that. It's a very interesting change between our old color science and our new color science. And what you'll see in the mini LF footage is that after it's processed through reveal, it matches an Alexa 35 perfectly.
We found this little studio not far from our Burbank office. And as you can see, it's got a wide variety of bright colors. So for example, here's the Mini LF original footage processed through the old color science. And then here's the reveal processed footage. Now, if we zoom in, we can see the red on the right is how we perceived it at the time. And we know this because we actually had an Alexa 35 with us plugged into an HDR monitor. And it's not unusual in the, that kind of situation to look from the monitor and look at, at what the camera is shooting and see a match between colors. This is something I've noticed consistently. On the left, you can see the open sign is a little bit bluish. That's a known issue with our old color science. Um, it's one of the few issues we've had that we've since corrected. We're going to be looking a lot at purples because purples are rendered very, very, very differently. And maybe it's not something that we would worry about normally because there's not a, there's not a lot of purple in the real world. But at the same time, it really illustrates the changes in our new color science. Blues are very different now. They are perceptually more accurate. Before, blues might be a little bit more saturated in the old color science. And this powder blue on the right is actually more of what we saw when we were there. Here we have a very bright saturated purple in the original color science. In the new color science, we can see a lot more subtlety. As you can see, there is a bit of blue in there and there's a transition from blue at the, the bottom up into a, a, a more purple color. And that's not really visible in the old color science. Everyone wants to see brake lights because historically brake lights have been a bit of a problem. Reds have been an issue in digital cameras for a while and really bright reds can maybe not track properly. And that's something that we've experienced as well. As I just pointed out, our reds previously had tracked a little bit blue. Our bright saturated reds were not pure reds, but now we have fixed that and our bright reds are actually perceptually a match for what you would see by eye in this situation. Even in the background lighting, we can see that the Chinese lanterns are a little bit on the bluish side in the old color science. In the new color science, they're a little bit more uh, warm red, which is how they were perceived at the time when we shot this. And this purplish light on the floor is actually much more subtle in reveal, where we can see it's a little bit dimmer and there's a much broader range of color in there. I can see a little bit of blue, I can see a little bit of purple, whereas the, the reflection on the floor on the left in the original color science is just a bright purple. Here's another example with our old color science and then with reveal applied. In the doorway on the left, I see a very saturated blue. And on the right, I feel a much less saturated blue that feels maybe a bit more natural. We're, we're going to see more of this because what I feel in the old color science is I, I think the color of the light comes through more strongly. In the new color science, I still feel the color of the light, but I still know what the underlying colors of the illuminated subject are. And I've got a very strong example of that coming up. Once again, our old reds shifted a little bit blue because we, we were using the old tools to really focus on a flesh tone and something had to give, but we don't have to compromise anymore. Our new color science is dead on accurate. Once again, the reds track, even in the bright neon. Once again, a difference in purples. We're gonna see significant differences in purples and greens. For example, this was one of my first questions after I looked at the footage processed both ways. I emailed our color science team and I asked, why is the green in reveal dimmer than the green in the previous color science? And this is where I learned about how we are so, we are much better able to perceptually map the brightness of colors. Because the green on the right is how it appeared when we shot it. The green on the left looks fine. And we would accept that if we had never been in that space. If I just saw this in dailies and I hadn't been on the shoot, or I didn't remember the color very accurately, I would say that looks just fine. But being on set and being able to look from a monitor up at that green, I can say that perceptually the monitor matched what I saw by eye. Now, once again, if I flip back and forth between these slides, you can see that red in the background is significantly different. 
And actually, you can see the red on the phone booth is significantly different. This neon comes through uh, much more interestingly. Uh, I think on the left, the, the tube is a little bit oversaturated and the purple is a little bit overdriven. It feels much more natural to me on the right in the reveal color science. And of course, this red was more warm as you see on the right. And we verified that with the Alexa 35 and an HDR monitor when we were there. The red on the left, it's fine if you weren't there and you didn't know what that color was, but the color on the right is much more accurate. We see a little bit of difference in the brightness value on her face and in her skin. We can see a difference in the brightness of the red on the phone booth. And we can see a difference in the yellow of her shirt. Once again, we're mapping the brightness of these colors more accurately based on how a human would perceive them if they were standing in that same place. This is a particularly interesting shot. This was lit with a single sky panel, aimed into a corner of the ceiling, and I tried to match the color of the light coming from the open sign. I wanted to make this feel as if the open sign was lighting the scene. As you can see, there's a significant difference when we switch to reveal. Specifically, once again, in the old color science, I feel more of what the color of the light was. In the new color science, I still feel the light, but I can also sense what the color of his face is. And if that's confusing, I'll point to his shirt. On the left, his shirt feels purple, which is the color of the light. On the right, I feel the color of the light, but I can tell the shirt is a blue shirt, which it actually was. This was really interesting. It's a, a tiny little detail, but it kind of shows how our deep blues have improved. On the left, I used a color picker to look at that blue in that, uh, that sign. And what I saw was that it was blue and there was nothing else in there. There was no red or green, it was just blue. On the right, we can see there's some red and there's some green in there. And it's a much more subtle hue of blue. So now we're actually seeing the color of what that actually was as opposed to what our color science could render it as before. Here's the original, and here's the reveal version. Once again, this Chinese lantern is very, very different. On the left, it's a little bit bluish. On the right, it's a warm red, which is much more accurate to what it was in reality. And we see the same thing in the sign. And actually, the sign is a much more interesting hue, I think. Uh, the hue on the left is fine. If we didn't know what that color was, because we'd never been in that space, this would be perfectly acceptable. And once again, our color science was the gold standard, has been the gold standard for 12 years. But now we've done better. And that red on the right is much more true to life. This is a great lesson in how the perceptual mapping of our color improves images overall. If you look at the woman's face in the foreground, here's the original color science, and here's the new color science. I see a lot more shape in her face, and I wanted to find out why. And it appears to be because we are more accurately mapping the color of her face in terms of brightness. On the left, it feels maybe like we've flashed some film, the shadows are a little brighter, her face is a little brighter, and the tones wash together just a little bit. On the right, I can see a lot more tonality in her face. She feels like she has a lot more shape, and I feel like the skin tone is more accurate even though she's being lit by a light that is not a white light. This was interesting. Sometimes you see things in the details that you never expected. And the difference in how this rose is rendered on her shirt is really spectacular. It has a lot more shape on the right. On the left, it's fine. We would accept that image. It's a beautiful image. But on the right, it's got a lot more complexity and depth. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening under the hood, uh, because there are some things you need to know about when dealing with Reveal, because it is different. Um, the biggest difference is that in the past, with our old color science, colorists were used to using lift, gamma, and gain, and being able to sort of force a color transform that way without using a display transform light. That worked well in the old color science. The new color science is very different. It doesn't quite work the same way. 
uh, we really recommend using our display LUTs or building your own display LUT because uh, we feel that you, you gain a lot more accuracy and color grading is exceptionally easy. Our new color space was actually chosen from several contenders that we showed to colorists and they chose the one that we are currently using now. Now log C4 is a bit different from log C3. Our log curve is different in a couple of different ways. One of the things we had to do was we had to map middle gray to a lower value because we now have more overexposure latitude and we had to create more room to handle that. Now this is not a concern because log is not something you're supposed to look at anyway. So where middle gray falls is completely arbitrary. And we map it to the proper space when we pass it through one of our display reference transform LUTs. If you look at it directly, it will look darker, but this is not an issue because we have plenty of code values in there. Our new Airy RAW actually captures 13-bit Airy RAW instead of 12 bits, so we actually have twice the code values that we did before. And we don't let you record log C4 in ProRes at less than 12 bits. So there is tons of shadow detail. You don't have to worry about the fact that middle gray is lower. There is lots of detail down there. All we're doing is making room for the highlights, but you do have to address that when you build the LUT. That's why our log C3 LUTs don't work with the log C4 footage for a couple of reasons, part of which is how we're mapping colors now, but also because middle gray is mapped at a different place. Now, because of this, lift gamma gain don't necessarily work on log C4 the same way. If you just use lift gamma gain to grade your footage, what happens is when you pull the blacks down, you lose the gentle roll off that we provide in our display LUTs. And what will happen is the blacks will appear very crunchy. They will, they will drop off a cliff. And that's not really desirable. And so you need to build in that curve yourself or use one of our display LUTs. The other thing that happens is, whereas in the previous color science, pulling the shadows down would increase saturation and if effectively force a Rec. 709 display transform, that doesn't really work the same way in log C4 because you're not pulling the blacks down as far. So we really do recommend using our display reference LUTs, at least until you get a feel for what's going on. In the camera, we're handling things a little bit differently. One of the major differences between uh, Reveal and our previous color science is that the creative intent is now separate from the display transform. The camera will handle the display transform on its own. And by doing that, you can not only view it in different ways on set. So for example, SDI-1 can output a Rec. 709 signal. SDI-2 can put out an HDR signal. But in post, you don't have to redo the LUT, the creative look, for the different color spaces in which your material will be delivered. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me at lenses at If I can't answer your question, I will find someone who can. Thank you.